on the bottom <laughs> what is up everyone welcome back here on the bay area crab season has just gotten underway and today is my first trip out to see if i can go get some of those nice creepy crawlers and uh there's quite a few regulations this year that are new oh. anyways got my hoop nets here everything's pretty much set up we're just waiting for some of the other guys that we're going with today to get here and uh, yeah, I'm kind of out of breath here because um, I just carried my whole kayak, all the gear, all the bait, and everything. I think this is the heaviest load that I've ever taken on this kayak. <sighs> all right, we'll see you guys out on the water. So one of the nice things about this motored kayak is now I don't have to worry about pedaling. I can just work on setting everything up as I'm working my way out so that's exactly what we're doing right now we're gonna get all our buoys set up so once we get out to the spot we can just drop everything down all right we are coming up on the spot here yeah just drop them in the line that way All right, I'm gonna drop them here. All right, first one, go in here. So we're using hoop nets today, so that means we're gonna have to check them a little bit more frequently than I would normally with the traditional square um, collapsible Danielson pot. So we're probably gonna drop them in for about maybe an hour and I'll do some fishing in the meantime. Um, but the main mission for today is crap. All right, there's one. All right, here goes. Same thing as the traditional crab pots. I want to drop these fairly slowly so that I make sure that they hit the bottom flat. You don't want that ring to flip upside down or anything like that. So drop them down. Oh, there it is. Just felt it hit the bottom. That one's good. That's number two. All right, number three. So the reason we're using hoop nets today is because in California, well, certain areas of California, they've actually outlawed, for the time being, the traditional square Danielson crab traps that I normally use for my kayak. And the reason for that is they've been having some issues with the rope from the crab pots getting entangled with whales that are migrating through this area. And so, because they you know, track that the whales are in this area at this moment. That is why we can't use uh, those square crab pots. And you might be asking yourself, well, if you can't use that, why is this hoop netting any different? We still have the same rope that's going up. Well, I would kind of agree with you. And to be honest, I don't really know the 100% of the reason why they did that or hypothetical reason. The crab cages are much better at fishing longer soaks, so leaving them overnight or even multiple days um, out here. And the hoop nets are more of a one-time thing. So you drop them in the morning, come back in an hour and pick them up. So maybe they want to discourage you from leaving your pots out here for a long period of time um, because that you know, lessens your chance of getting tangled with a whale. And maybe if you come and you, you know, check your traps every hour and you find that the whale's entangled, maybe you're able to get it out and you know, that whale can survive. I don't really know. Those are just hypothetical scenarios. That's what I've come up with, and um, I'm gonna roll with it for now until I hear something, something better. But anyway, that's why we're using the these uh, circle hoop nets as opposed to the normal traps that I use. The traps I have a lot more confidence in using. I can leave them for like a three or four hour soak, do some fishing, 
and then come back and they'll be full of crab, or at least that's the plan. The hoop nets I gotta check more frequently. It kind of messes with my fishing schedule, so I can't go fishing as much as I you know, normally do. So anyways, it's not a preferred method, but still very effective. If you've seen my channel, I use these for lobsters and caught plenty of lobster with them. And I've seen plenty of people catch crab with them. So they definitely work. Um, let me mark this spot here. But um, yeah, like I said, they're a little bit less effective in my opinion. It's 1046 at the moment. Um, so I'll come back at right around noon, maybe a little bit before noon and pick them all up. In the meantime, I'm gonna try to catch some bait. I got a sabiki tied on here, catch some fresh bait so that I can put some fresh stuff in on the next cycle. And uh, some of these other guys need some bait too. So I'm the bait master, I guess you could say. It's time for me to assume my duties as the bait master. All right guys, first pull of the season. So we're using these hoop nets. So these hoop nets are open in the top, so you gotta pull them up fairly consistently. Oh, I got two. All right, that's not bad. Pretty sure that's a keeper right there. That's another, that's definitely a keeper. Drop this back down. So the difference with these traps is more of like a run and gun strategy. So honestly, two per per net is pretty good, I think. Um, whereas with the with the uh, crab cages, I like to average a little bit higher than two per per pull. But since we're running and gunning, we're pulling like once per hour on average. Two is pretty good. When you think about it, I have four, or I could put brought more hoops, but I only have four with me. And if I do two per trap, you know, two rounds through, I'll have more than enough, you know, more than my limit. So anyways, definitely a keeper. One. Yeah, that's a six inch right there, a little, almost six and a quarter. Two keepers. All right, let's go check out the second one. So I just want to give a quick shout out to Old Town. Uh, my motor actually, it was still working, but it wasn't swiveling like it, it's supposed to. Um, and I tried to diagnose it myself, I actually talked to customer service, they tried to fix it you know, over the phone. And unfortunately they couldn't, so they swapped it out for me and uh, got me back out on the water. And now we're, we're running just as if we had a brand new kayak almost. So I just wanna give a quick shout out to Old Town. Um, I always leave a link to their website in my description of pretty much every kayak video. Um, I know this kayak specifically is not for everyone. I mean, it's not gonna lie, it's an expensive kayak. So obviously not everyone's in the market for that. But they have a wide range of different kayaks from, you, you know, less expensive to probably, I think this might be their most expensive kayak. So check them out. But like I always said, I always leave the link in the description. I got two in my first. Keeper number three, we got a rock crab. So there's two different, the main two crabs that you can catch out here are rock crab and Dungeness. And Dungeness is definitely the preferred crab. Um, I don't know if you can tell there, but the legs on the rock crab are really small, except for the claws. The claws have quite a bit of meat. Um, the legs on the Dungeness, you know, all, all those legs all have a nice amount of meat in them, plus the body. Um, cra the rock crab are really, most of their meat majority is in the claws. Adam, so, you got two keepers? It's a little bit more work for what you get. All right, so we're pulling up all the slack here. I try to get as much of right on top of the hoop net as I can. Um, the crabs aren't as good at swimming out as the lobsters are, so it's not as crucial. But I think the more on top you get, the better. 
and then you just want to bring it up back to steady. You definitely don't want to drop it back down. This feels heavy. I think there's some in here. Oh yeah. Three keepers. No. Look at that. Three of them in one. Oh. One keeper. Adam. Nice. Got the right yeah, what are you using, Adam? Two keepers. Um, this is just mackerel. Just mackerel. Three keepers. No, oh, and a rock crab. Rock crab keeper. Dude, you just got three keepers in one pot. Like I said, there's the rock crab and then there's the dungeness. So rock crab, so both of the crabs were measuring the this shell right here, the carapace. And rock crabs need to be four inches across and uh, this is our crab gauge right here so we measure this one this is way over this is like five a little bit over five so that's a nice legal i don't know if that's a yellow rock crab or there's so there's yellow rock crab red rock crab and there might even be one more i don't know but anyways that's a keeper rock crab like i said see how big the claws are compared to the rest of the body this is where the majority of the meat is I think this might have been the smallest one. Maybe this other one, I don't know. But if we measure him, definitely a keeper. I'll just show you guys. A nice close up here. So one more thing to note on the crab measuring. So there's two points right here, the like farthest back towards the back of the crab. And you're not measuring those points themselves, but right on top of those points. So if you put the crab gauge, it'll rest right on top of there and you can see that one, it hits the, the crab gauge and the minimum size for Dungeness in California is five and three quarters right there. At least at the time of this video. It's always important to double check all your regulations on the uh, Department of Fishing Game website um, because they're always changing. But right now, five and three quarters, right there it hits. So that's keeper here. Pretty sure that was, oh, maybe this, this one might be smaller. Let's see. Let's see if this one makes it. Oh, yeah, this one's undersized, so I, I misspoke there. Two keepers on that one. This one's a little bit too small. Right, this is a nice one right here. You, see, you can see it's got all the legs and everything. That's the kind of crabs we want to see, and let's see how big the shell is. Look at how lively it is. Ooh, six and a quarter. Not huge but that's a really nice keeper, especially for the kayak. So that's two keepers in the first, or on that one, one keeper in the second one, and two keepers in the first one. So five total already. That's pretty good, so if I, like I said at the beginning, five I'd be happy with, but um, now, I think now I gotta get greedy. Now I gotta go for a limit. So um, five on this round so far, we still have one more pot to go check here. Um, so optimistically, we got at least five keepers in the tank. If that, you know, pace, we hold this pace, we'll have limits by the second round, by the time the second round comes around. So anyways, let's go check our last one up here. And uh, yeah, it's been good so far. A couple of times I've gotten pot stuck. Not what you want, but sometimes it just happens. So the best thing that I've done, the what's worked best for me, is to kind of try to figure out where your pot is and then work your kayak or boat in a circle around to try and figure out how you can get that, that pot dislodged. Dang, I didn't think there was rocks over here. But apparently I was wrong. Yeah, I got it. Okay, we got it out. So I'm definitely not gonna drop 
I trapped back in this spot because obviously some rocks here. Yep, and as suspected, no crabs. Just these little tiny little rock crabs. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and drop it closer to the, where the other three pots were um, with the idea that I'd be avoiding the, uh, those rocks. And uh, we'll drop them in for another hour. Might go to do some fishing and we'll check them back. Five keepers on the first round, so that's a good sign. I don't know, Tonkin's trying to do it the hard way. All right guys, another hour has elapsed. So now we're gonna go do round two. So I'm circling back around to this first pot. Last round, we got five keepers. And um, you know, if all goes as planned, we should get five more this round. Although, usually the return diminishes as we go along. So I'm optimistic that we're gonna get five more, but we'll see. The one thing that I did do this time that I didn't do the first round was I put some fresh bait in there. So I put a fresh smelt in every single, I think I might have forgotten one, but all the other three, I put fresh smelt in there. Uh, so ideally that fresh bait should, should attract those crabs in a little bit better than the frozen stuff. So um, without further ado, let's go get them. Feels like there's something in there. Come on. Oh, nope, just small ones. Hmm. All right, might be time to move these. It's all right, I'm about to get a bunch here. Okay. So, hopefully we can get a couple more before. So, hopefully we can get a couple more before the bike. Oh, 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 Somehow it crawled underneath, but anyways, that's not how you're supposed to get them, but that's how we got them. Let's just see exactly how oh, big it is. Oh, dude, he was seconds dude, from this guy. off. Yeah, this he guy. Finally, he realized, uh, he realized I'll, what was going on yeah. when he was above the kayak. Yeah. I was, oh yeah, six and a quarter, six and a half maybe. Yeah. 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 It was hanging on the It was on the bottom. Like I was pulling it up and, and then was, like I looked in the trap and all I saw was like the like the legs up like this. And he let and go I was like, one oh, no. arm. Woo! And then Adam him went... in. <laughs> oh my god. It was crazy. Wow. Keeper number seven. number seven. We're gonna go move spots because this spot, even though I did get that one on the last one, it's definitely not as fruitful as it was the first round, so I think a change of scenery might be in our best favor to see if we can finish out this limit. Spot number two. We're going a little bit deeper this time. Um, talked to a guy earlier today. He said he did well out here, so we'll give it a try. All right. Well, we're going to do a little bit of live bait fishing here. I just tied on a uh, live jack smelt. Um, just the same thing that I I've been trying pretty often here, so nothing new. Um, the way I am trying new is I'm trying some new areas. So the last time I came out here, if you watched the last video, um, the fishing wasn't that good. I mean, it was really tough. I barely scraped by and got a ling kind of last minute. Um, so I'm gonna try to explore some new areas, see if I can find some, maybe some new reefs, maybe where there's some more lings that haven't been hit yet. So I think I'm getting bit. Yeah. Got him. Yeah, I got him. Dang, Adam, right next to me. <laughs> there he goes. Keeper? I don't know. Can't tell. Uh. That's a keeper. Yeah, that's a keeper. Oh, I 
just tell Ense how the lingcod bite is tough over here, but I guess there's still a few fish out here. That off. Measure and check. I'm gonna say it's a 23. Oh, right on the money. Maybe 23 and a quarter. That mouth closed. Yeah, 23 and a quarter. Keeper, we'll take him. All right, it's a nice keeperling right there. Good eater. So the bigger fish are not quite as good eating. Still good nonetheless. Oh, it's peeing. But anyways, they're all good eating, but the little ones are a little bit better. They're a little more tender. Meat cuts up a little bit better. And uh, yeah. Nice little ling to go with our crab. All right, well this wind and just the overcast cold temperature really just picked up. So we're just gonna do one last pull here of all four of our traps and then head in. So like I said before, seven, we're sitting at seven right now. Got my one ling. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a second one. I really wanted to get that second one for the limit, but that's okay. One ling, seven crab, or seven dungies, two rock crab and four pulls ahead. So let's see if we can finish up this limit in the next couple pulls here. So we're coming up our first one. Fingers crossed. All right, get those crab. What do you guys think? There's crab in here? I think there is. Feels like it. Oh, I see. A couple of crab. There might be a keeper. I don't know. This one's going to be close. We'll measure that one. Then this is. I think this is a yellow rock crab. That's definitely a keeper. So we'll throw that one in. Yeah, a little bit small. and get out of here. Final tally was eight Dungeness and I think five Keeper Rock Crab. Ense also got eight Keeper Dungeons. Nick got four. I think Taku got three or four too. Productive day overall out here. Actually it was a little bit better than I was anticipating. But we're gonna go head home and eat this fresh crab. Doesn't get any better than that. So anyways, there's a lot of confusion with the regulations this year. Uh, you'll see some of my buoys are arranged in a certain way. So if you're interested, I did make a video on my second channel um, about the new regulations, kind of trying to answer some questions. Uh, but it's always best practice to uh, you know, double check with the DMG part of Fishing Game website, California part of the Fishing Game website, because everything is always changing. But hopefully that video will answer a few of your questions. And speaking of second channel, if you didn't already know, I have a second channel where I'm kind of putting some more how-to videos, just a bunch of different stuff on there. Um, and I also have my Patreon link to that. So, so if you're interested, there's a few more videos that aren't uh, public on my channel. They're actually unlisted. And the way you unlock those is by joining the Patreon. So if you're interested, welcome to join me on the Patreon. I also go live every month, once a month. Answer any questions you guys have. It's just a fun little hangout session. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one. Flying smell! <laughs>